guys welcome back uh, in today's video I'm gonna be going through how I made this main wolf uh, doll so these are quite small quite a bit smaller than my um, normal dolls uh, I want to try and make dolls this size I really much prefer this size but they always seem to turn out bigger than what I um, intended uh, so this one has a sculpy face and sculpy feet um, I want to do some more experimenting with feet as well in the future um, so they can be a bit more realistic I think so sculpy face sculpy feet the spine is made from um, ball and socket armature and the legs are um, wire the legs I went with wire just because I wanted them to be a bit thinner and the ball and socket armature is a bit bigger so um, yes I didn't want to make it too big if that makes sense but anyway it moves quite well um, because of the way I did the body the movements are a bit more restricted than um, my normal way of doing things so I hand sewed the body and um, and uh, uh, tried a little bit of a different technique so I think I'm thinking I'm gonna put that on my patreon for patreon for my five dollar and up tier um, but the rest of the video I'll go through how I made him um, and uh, hopefully get a little bit more information about maned wolves and uh, let you know in the video. So anyway, if you want to see how I made him, um, you can keep watching. Also, this guy has been uh, uh, sold. He's been snapped up by a patron uh, with my early access, uh, the early access perk. So if you want any early access to any of my work, you can get it for a little as $2 on my Patreon. Uh, Patreon. <laughs> um, so yes, so he has found a home. But, um, yes, I'll have more dolls coming up soon. But, yes, he's the only maned wolf, so he's one off, one of a kind. Uh, so, anyway, so if you want to see how I made him, then just keep watching. Alright, so I'm actually sculpting uh, the parts for this uh, little wolf, this maned wolf. So, the sculpting, the face, and the feet will be in its own separate video, but for now... I uh, will just uh, include small little snippets of it. Um, so I am using uh, Sculpey Original to sculpt the head and feet for the main wolf. Um, and I, I like to use Sculpey Original just because I like the consistency of it. Uh, it's a little bit softer than um, Sculpey Orig uh, Super Sculpey when it's baked. Uh, so it's just a little bit more, you just need to be a little bit more careful with it. but. Um, if you're concerned about that, then just use some Super Sculpey or even cast it in resin. So for these dolls, I'm going for a smaller uh, type doll this time. Um, so this is a little look at the head once it's been sculpted and baked. I've used glass eyes for this particular one. Um, so this will be part of my new like collection. So I want to start doing animals because um, there's so many animals and um, you know a lot of people are doing fantasy animals now. So I sort of kind of lost an interest in fantasy type animals unless I get a commission or something then I'll definitely do some kind of fantasy animal I'll still do them here and there but I'm kind of a little bit more interested in um, actual animals and it's a great way for you guys to actually uh, see some animals that you might not ordinarily know about um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just applying a primer to the um, polymer clay pieces so I have a primer video but it's basically just a paint from Derivian Matisse and it is uh, supposed to be primer for canvases but it works really well on uh, resin and polymer clay so then I'm going to go around and paint all the bits that need to be painted so it's usually around the eyes the nose and the mouth uh, and I'm using a paint from Chromacryl it's just a water-based uh, acrylic paint uh, it works really well on um, resin and also polymer clay as well but you know you can find some clay in your local craft store i'm in australia so chroma cool might be a little bit hard to find um but you shouldn't have a problem finding any sort of cheapish um acrylic paint all right so i wanted to just give a little bit of information on maine wolves uh so maine wolves are the biggest canid of uh, south america it's neither a fox or a wolf, but a species of their own, and they're a member of the Chrysocryon family. 
They're around one meter in height and weigh about 20 to 22 kilograms. They mainly live on grasslands and scrub forests and they're omnivores and will eat fruits, sugarcane, small mammals, uh, but they usually eat a fruit called um, wolf, uh, wolf apple. Uh, and their main habitat threat is destruction of agricultural land and also from feral dogs and cars. So there you have it, a little info about a maned wolf. Uh, so what I'm doing now is uh, just working on the body. So uh, the body video will be over on my Patreon for $5 and up tiers. Uh, but I can give you a little snippet of what you'd find over there. So it's what I've uh, done um, with bulking the body, how I, how I sewed the body on, uh, what fabric I used and um, what method I used as well. So that will be all over in on my patreon um, and you can get access to plenty of other videos as well and little perks and stuff um, just have a look at the tiers and see which one suits you uh, and I try and update pretty regularly about what um, projects I'm working on and just little whip pictures and stuff like that so and of course videos and tips and stuff so uh, link will be in the description box so if you're interested in something like that then head over there so uh, once I've sewn it up with the lattice stitch, uh, it's not all sewn up, uh, but most of it is, but I wanted to adhere the um, bit to the neck onto the head. So I'm using a tacky fabric glue and it's the same one that I use for every other doll that I make. It's really great. Um, it adheres the fabric really, really well to um, resin and polymer clay. When you're using certain types of glue, just uh, do a little test on your polymer clay because sometimes it can sort of be, it can sort of eat away at the clay. So it's always great to do a little test before you do anything. Um, so you had a little look at what everything looks like all sewn up. Uh, I haven't given it a trim yet, but I will uh, glue everything together and then leave it overnight to uh, cure and harden and give it a little trim. So this is what we have so far. Pretty happy with the shape that it turned out. It's just uh, the body's a lot more tedious using this method, but um, you get a little bit more of a refined body, which I'm pretty happy with. The thing that I found, it's a little bit more restricted than my normal way, uh, but I'll talk about that in my Patreon video. So moving on to furring the face, uh, just a little snippet of what I do. Um, and I mean, I don't really have a tutorial for this. I'm not sure if I am going to do one, but um, definitely give a try of different methods and you come up with something yourself. Um, still undecided if I'm going to do a tutorial or not. So once that's done, I can start uh, doing any more refinements to the face. So what, what I'm doing now is just adding a bit more detail around the eyes, the nose and the mouth and any colour that uh, your animal or creature will have, um, you can add it as well. So I'm just making sure everything's the right colour. I'm going to be adding a little bit of uh, colour to the back of the mouth. Um, usually on the main wolves they're sort of a little bit black so I'm using a, a stained by Sharpie pen a texter um, these are really really good but I can't find them for the life of me in Australia anymore I uh, don't know why and I don't really want to pay a million dollars to get it shipped from America so I'll have to find an alternative another way you can use fabric paint um, and just sort of brush it on uh, I had a little go at that to see if I was happy with the results of that but I wasn't so I ended up using an airbrush uh, I highly recommend using an airbrush I'm just kind of lazy with the airbrush because I have to go and clean it um, and I have a small compressor for an airbrush which works okay but now uh, my cats will be like terrified of it because it's the scariest thing in the world. So I have a large compressor um, over in the garage which uh, I used to uh, do the rest of this wolf and that's a bigger one with more pressure so you can get it done really quickly. This airbrush is quite cheaper one. Uh, I have an iWater one as well but I have a video about the airbrushes that I use if you're interested in that. Um, and then adding any little final details to it like whiskers and um, patterns or anything else. Uh, I have a whiskers video over on my Patreon as well uh, so I'll let you know what I use and how I apply it um, so you get access to that for $5 as well. So another perk for the Patreon is you have early access to any work that I will release. So in, in saying that a Patreon has 
used that and purchased him. So he's uh, found, already found a home. Uh, but I have some new dolls coming up very very soon so definitely stay tuned um like i said everything is in the description box for my patreon you can also check me out at instagram and facebook at creatures of nat and my shop at creatures of nat.com uh thank you to my patrons again and i'll catch you in the next one bye